key here is that the grape juice we have has sugar in it, high fructose corn syrup. Mm -hmm. And the grape juice, the sugar shuts down the cells for five hours, enough that the, for the grape juice to pass through. The key here is, is two things. If you drink the Welch's, what they started doing was this. You take, you can do it two ways. I'll take the easy way. I'll tell you the easy way. The, the, the one way is you take the Welch's grape juice and you put some, uh, a pinch of baking soda in the glass and the grape juice turns a cobalt blue in it, destroys the sugar and you drink it and it goes straight to the cells and start regenerating the cells. So, I said, I gotta go and get me some, well, get me some baking soda, some Welch's grape juice. So, these, these, these black people in the in 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 the in the in the in the fifties, they sixties, and they have regenerated their cells. So, another way is, is you can go. I got it at Walmart. You go to Walmart, you see the juice aisle. On one aisle, the aisle right before that, and it's the same in other countries, because other cities. Because when I was in Indiana doing a lecture. It was the same way. The aisle before the juice aisle is the kosher aisle. <laughs> and they got a kosher grape juice called Kadeem. Yes, sir. It ain't got no sugar or nothing in it. Number That's two. what them Jews drink. That's right. That's right. Kadeem. I got a bottle of in the car. That's right. <laughs> you can get the Kadeem and it does the same thing, but you got to get yes. it and just start drinking it. Yes. And it regenerates the K -E -D -E -M. cells. K-E-D-E-M. What's that? K-E-D-E-M. K-E-D-E-M, Kadeem. And it don't have no sugar, nothing, and it goes straight to the blood cell, goes straight to the cell. Yes, sir, that's the bomb. That's it. And, and the stuff works. Jewish stuff. Man. That's that Jew stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, they ain't no more. Them, <laughs> them Jews ain't gonna be into nothing that ain't gonna work now. They ain't like black folks. We loyal. Shit ain't work since we've been here. Or at least ain't work since 1957. <laughs> we still in it. <laughs> The History Channel will show you that the stuff is coming out. The History Channel came on. They did a thing on how Elvis, they put 10 days to change America. And they said one was how Elvis changed America. And they said it, and it had something to do with the Civil Rights Movement. I said, well, it was already, it, was all, it came on at 8, it was already, already at uh, about 9, or, already about 8.45. I said, no, I'm going to wait till 11 and catch this year. I want to see what lie they're going to come with. So I watched this thing on how Elvis changed America when he went on the Ed Sullivan show. I said, let me see what they're going to do. Oh, now they're going to make Elvis Martin Luther King now. <laughs> but to my surprise, they came with it. They said that basically in so many words, and it's the same story we know, but we know, but they document it now, that America in the 1950s had a certain rigid mentality that would not be the precursor for modern America. They was locked out a certain amount of things. And in so many words, they say, because they didn't have the black element. And they said, not only did Elvis bring the music from our side of town to their side of town and make them go crazy, they said that he even, what really they said, he even went down to the black community and bought the clothes that black people used to wear in Memphis. And when they saw those clothes, you know all the colors and shit, you know black people. You know what I'm saying? And they saw them clothes and said, hey, it's all right to wear an orange suit. <laughs> they went crazy. And they said, well, by the time you leave that settlement, they saw black culture that normally, you see what I'm saying? The, the new black culture, because they had, they, they had it from Duke Ellington on back to, Lou, you know, Louis Armstrong, Duke Ellington, General Watt, but the new stuff, the black radical thing that would later on become modern rock and roll. They took the rock, took the roll off in the 70s to make it white. Say rock. You see what I'm saying? But, it, but what they were saying was that their culture transformed America. They said, and by that time, it, it, when the Civil Rights Movement came about, white America, the youth 
that already had a rebellious attitude enough to allow the civil rights movement to happen because not only the, the rigid power structure was not dealing with black people sitting in, they were dealing with their own children. They later on became the hippie and tune in, tune out, and whatever. You see what I'm saying? So, but they broke it down every day. I was like, man, these people, they, something is going on because they're telling the truth. They broke it down from his, from his dress, his talk, his speech, to his gyrations, all black. They even went to, they even went to the actual, they even went to the churches he used to hang out with. They went to the clubs he used to hang out with. I say, so it's a whole new thing that's coming down. Y'all all right? I just want to put that, I want, I want, I want, I want to put that out. Uh, okay, let's see here where we're going with this thing here. A couple of things. Um, they, like I said, they, found, they also found seven, they found 16 statues of the goddess Sekhmet. The goddess Sekhmet. In, in Egypt. Recently. Now this is very key. Because this has a lot to do with where we're going with this particular information. I just want to get a couple of things off my notes before we go into um, some things. It's interesting, they killed Octavia Butler. You know, she was a black sci-fi writer. All of a sudden, she falls in the driveway and hit her head and she's dead. Yeah, right. You understand what I'm saying? You know, anytime... How long ago did that happen? That was um, in February. February the 1st of March. You know, she was a black sci-fi writer, Octavia Butler. You see what I'm saying? So all of a sudden now, she, she mysteriously falls and she's dead. You know what I'm saying? So it's like they did that, the sister that, uh, uh, that was doing the work on the water. What's her name? Mona Harris. Mona Harris. Yeah. Mona Harris, and all of a sudden she mysteriously dies. You see what I'm saying? Because she was doing the work on the, on the water thing. In the brain. You see? You know, because water and melanin goes together like peas and carrots. You understand what I'm saying? So she was doing, uh, she was doing the work on that, and all of a sudden, um, all of a sudden, uh, she uh, uh, falls out dead. So what I'm saying here is this here also. I was talking about the music, and I said the music is a part of the religion. Um, I got a 31 man equalizer. You saw it. The brother Quaku went up to New York, and he got him a 31 man. And then I told him, I said, well, you just went on another initiation level. I said, what? I said, wait a minute. I said, what's happening here is that there's spirits. And based on the octaves, those spirits here inside of you, they rise up. So there's certain octaves. That's why the CD, when one of the, one of the guys in, in 1990, he took his Miles Davis album collection and traded it in for the CDs. And when he got home, he had been listening to Miles Davis since the 1950s. He said, wait, something ain't right here. I, I, something, because I've been listening to this thing. And he looked on the back, and they used to print it on the CD, they said there's been certain octaves that have been taken out. Wow. So you hear music, but you don't hear music. The only way you can truly hear music were well, two ways. Number one, you'll see, if you go to the CD store now, well, since 1997, they started making CDs on the equivalent of an album. But they cost more. You'll see the one for $14. Then you'll see one that say 19 or 23. You will like, why is, why is the CD $23 and this one here is 14 That's because the one that's $23 that costs more got the octaves in it. <coughs> you see what I'm saying? So they're dealing with the sound. So in so many words, you don't hear sound with digital. They have designed it so you hear the music, but you don't really hear the music. The reason why I know I was in Indiana, I was doing a lecture a month ago in Indianapolis. The sister put on, she had a little album, she went and had a little album collection. And she had a damn near closing play turntable. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to talk bad about it, but it was a piece of crap made by Sony. <laughs> Hope when she get the tape, she don't. <laughs> You know, you know, I got a technique, what, 600, 6,000 or whatever. It's a difference. But she put on a Bobby Humphrey album. And there's a song called, it's the one that's almost a Hispanic song. It's called Bella Sucklessing, the song. Anybody familiar with 
Bobby Humphrey. Yep. It's a phone call. Bella yeah. Saza. Uh, it's a song on, on, it's also on the Greatest Hits LP, but it's on the album Fancy Dancer. It's the first song, first, first and second song, Fancy Dancer. And she put it on and I couldn't get enough of it. I said, I'm going home and dig this out of my stack. So she was telling her husband to find the CD because she had the same CD, but she wanted to play it in the car on the way to the airport. So we got it and got it, and I played it the whole time I was there. And we was going, going to the airport, she said, I got the CD, and she put it in, brand new CD, rode to the airport, and I wasn't feeling it worth a damn. I said, man, I've been playing this thing, and I just played it a few minutes before I left the house on the LP, and she had the worst turntable, and it was picking up all the stuff. Just, but her turntable was better than the CD. You see what I'm saying? It was better than the CD. So, um, so the more optics, and so one way you can do it is with the LP. Another way is with any good equalizer. It only have to be a 31 band. Any good equalizer. 